and welcome to Transmutational Thursday. What a day it's been already. I have been transmuting all over the place. Um, whoo, whoo, whoo. Finally, I got the internet at least uh, semi working. Today, we've got a great show. This is uh, the, uh, my name's Mark Abadi. Hello. Uh, this is the live inspirational common unity uh, collaboration where we showcase the uh, luminaries and spiritual leaders and scientists from around the world who are really uh, at this time in particular sharing their inspirational wisdom and their insights that can help you to uh, reconnect with your with your central column with your medai with your jedi with your uh, holy location um, today we've a wonderful guest. We've got Juan Pablo, who is, uh, I think he's Brazilian. You Brazilian? Give me a nod. Anyway, uh, it's some, some perfect South American country. You're muted at the moment. And, uh, and then after that we've got, uh, he's talking about uh, the, the spirituality of connectivity. A uh, real beautiful being. Uh, yeah, and let's get underway. Right now uh, we've got Juan Pablo. Juan, how What's are up? you, sir? Good, man. Good. Happy to be here with you. What's up? How's everything going? Great. You look like a, a, a handsome and fit version of me. Oh, what a beautiful a reflection we are. A browner version of me, you know? <laughs> you look great. You look great. How, uh, where are you? Thank you, brother. I'm in Costa Rica right now, blessed nice. out by the jungles of Costa Rica. Nice, nice. Tell, tell us about you. Uh, okay, so I am. Uh, we we first met at Bhakti Fest, where we where met I, at Bhakti Fest, yeah. Where I saw you uh, uh, deliver beautiful reflections to people, and then you had this kind of almost cult-like following, uh, uh, people following you around. Um, tell us about tell us about your work and what you've been doing in the last. T tell us about you. Intro intro yourself to people who might not know who you are. Well. I just love helping people empower themselves and be the best version of themselves, connect with their heart and purpose and, and, you know, step into their gifts. I feel so many of us are, are living our shadow purpose, right? And that's like hiding behind what gives you money or what people tell you that you're good at or what you think you're good at or what you think you should be doing or, you know, kind of lost in the, in the game of the matrix, right? Of the system. And, and all I do is help people um, just re reveal those blind spots that are not letting them see themselves for who they are in every way. So when I mean in every way, it's as an entrepreneur, so too, I help a lot of people, spiritual people that are like, yeah, life is so good. It's all perfect. It's all amazing. But they're too floaty, you know, too out there. I help them ground it. And okay, that's good. Yeah, life is perfect. I know we're a universal being, but mm -hmm. what are you doing with your life right now? Where Did, are you you say an entra Did you say an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur? Yeah, yeah uh, both. <laughs> an entrepreneur, go inside, and an entrepreneur, yeah. So it's, it's really helping people like build their business through, through all their gifts that they have and, and see that we're all holistic beings. We're not separate from, you know, if you're spiritual doesn't mean you can't be focusing on prosperity. If you're focusing on prosperity doesn't mean you can't be focused on health. Like you can right. live the best version of yourself right now. And it's all related. So that's what we do. I do. I travel 20 countries a year, helping people in retreats, in workshops. I speak a lot on stages too. I have my own method called quantum flow, which gives people very fast results in, you know, 10, 15 minutes. They kind of have a, a big revelation of their purpose and their energy and where they're at. And, mm -hmm. and it's, it's very powerful for people that also don't do that much yoga or don't do that, you know, any spiritual practice, but they, they're craving it. They're, they're hungry for it. So all I do is come explain through quantum physics, neuroscience, neuroplasticity. I explain with them what's happening. They kind of feel safe and open. And then, and then they're, they're ready to go, to go deep into whatever they, they're uh, ready to go deep into. So that's what it's about. I love it, man. So, so and how long have you been? Costa Rica, you, you live there? You have community there? 
Well, I had community here like eight years ago, but when I started teaching, when I saw you in Bhakti, I, I was already pretty much a nomad. That was like, what, six, six, five years ago or something like that? Uh, yeah, 2015 was my first Bhakti Fest. Okay, so that was, yeah, four years ago, I think. Yeah, five, I was already, no, five, five years ago. I was already a yeah, super nomad, just traveling, yeah, now I travel 20 countries a year and I don't really have a home. But now, thanks to this blessing that we received from the corona, now right. I have a home in Costa Rica for a couple of months until this get, goes over and we continue. We have a huge tour every year. It's a huge tour all over the world. Tell us about then how, how, you, how you're interpreting this um you know, this blessing, because it, it does seem to be a, a common theme amongst my guests that, that they're seeing this as a blessing and that they, they're quite excited about what's happening uh, in the world. Can you, can you talk a, yeah. bit about, uh, a bit about that? Well, I feel we're going in a moment right now where almost humanity needs this. Um, and yes, there's a lot of dark agendas underneath, and we could go in a rabbit hole and talk about everything that's happening. And I don't really want to go there. I'm not even wanting to nurture that because there is a lot going on behind just the virus. And it's right. nothing just by animals. Like it's created by humanity, by the, you know, the, the leading people on the planet. And, and there's a lot of like really low vibrational interest behind this related to vaccines and all this stuff. But beyond that, you know, when you see the big picture and don't focus on that, you see that humanity almost called this into our lives. That's what I feel when anything mm -hmm. that we feel is not in the highest comes into our life, we attracted it somehow. That happens as a human being. It's nothing outside. It's not that the universe is not supporting you. It's not that you could have or, or should have or nothing. It's all about inner magnetism. We attract this. And as humanity, we are a being. And we are attracted Like a collective, this, a collective being. A collective consciousness. And we become, it's a planetary consciousness. It's actually the consciousness of Gaia. Gaia, it's a living being. You can measure her vibration in mm -hmm. her. She's emitting this vibration. And now she has the highest vibration she's ever had. You know, why? Because for the first time, we're not polluting the planet. We're not doing all this damage that we normally do, like mm -hmm. really bringing the vibration of the earth down. So I feel as a humanity, as a human collective, and also for the earth, this was so needed. And we needed to mm. see everything that is coming up. First of all, us human beings learn to appreciate everything. Everything we have, everything we are. Like imagine for the society used to go out. Everybody's used to live outside of themselves, right? In the material world, in having, in doing, right. and in all the, the outside instead of the I amness, which is the blessing of being. And now they're putting you in your home like you can't even go out. Like, or you learn to be with yourself and love yourself, or you're going to have a nightmare. You're going to live a hell here on earth, you know? So there's so many blessings that we, it's a choice. I don't feel everybody's doing that choice. A lot of people are suffering. A lot of people are suffering even physically. So I have a lot of compassion for what's going on in the world yes. with families, with, right? We have, we have to send a lot of love all the time, of course, but always choosing love, always choosing the greatest picture, the biggest picture, the highest consciousness that we can choose to see the blessing in this. And we could go on and on and on of what's happening, right? The blessing that is this. But I feel if people change their mindsets and they learn to see it from a soul level, they would totally get the blessing of whatever's going on right now. Yeah. What are you most... Because there, obviously there are people who... You know, I mean, we're talking amongst ourselves and we're kind of, uh, as my dad likes to say, preaching to the choir. In other words, um, you know, we, we both agree and know what we're talking about in the, in the fundamental um, appreciation and humble realization of the benefits of this. But there's a lot of people caught in the trauma of this. Um, what, what would you recommend they can do to uh, start to realize the blessing of this? as opposed to the trauma? I would say the biggest blessing also that we can have thanks to this is like learning 
uh, or remembering more than learning because we're really not learning anything. We're just remembering who we are and how powerful we are when we connect from the soul. And for me, so it's not a term that's woo-woo, connect from the soul, more like, okay, be the observer. Have the capacity to step back and see the whole picture. Oh my God, that fear just showed up in my life. Of course, you're going to have fear. If you're watching news all the time, you're going to be fully in fear. You're going to be fully in doubt. Like it could be, it's a choice, but it's just right. showing us all this stuff that's coming up within us. Because if it's come up, it's because you have it inside and now it's time to heal it if you choose to do that. So for me, the biggest blessing is connect with your breath. Go meditate, be with yourself, find a practice that gets you in that place of being grounded. And what I always tell my students and my clients is like, be the eye of the hurricane. Don't get lost in the outside of the hurricane because you're going to get smashed, you know, you're going to die. And when you are in the eye of the hurricane, you are the observer. You are that grounded mountain, powerful, that it's not needing to do anything or go anywhere. Your power is within and is the power from your soul. So the biggest gift we can have is tap into the power of our soul. That helps us. There's so many people finding their purpose right now. So many people that used to live in their shadow purpose, like wasting their time almost, just right. passing by in survival mode. And from survival, I have so many clients in thrive mode. They're like, oh my God, I, I didn't even know I had this gift. They're going on online. They're sharing all their stuff with everyone. With all, they're, they're waking up. So it's a choice. Right, right, right. There is a wake up going on, right? Yeah. So, uh, okay, so, I mean, you know, be in the eye of the storm. Be in the, in the surrender yeah. to it. Um, again, what about the people who, who, who think that sounds great but have no idea how to? Um, yeah. You know, they, they, they really want to. They're like, oh, okay, sure. How? How do I do that? <laughs> Yes. So I see it's like if you, if you analyze, for example, in Tantra or in, in yoga, right? Like they analyze it through the koshas and they say it's all layers of being. And at the center, it's always the soul. So the soul is unstainable. The soul is unstoppable. The soul is unabusable. You can't mess up with the soul, right? What can be distorted and what can be, you know, uh, go crazy is your mental body or your mind your emotions or your emotional body, your energetic body, um, what we, um, uh, your bliss body, what we call, and like your, um, your uh, uh, wisdom body also, which I don't mm. want to go into those too much, but the most ones that we get caught up into is like the mental body. We think we are the mind. We get lost in the mind. So all of a sudden, through the news, they're like bombarding us with all this negativity and all these points of view that are not even true. And people, instead of stepping back and saying, oh, well, is this, maybe this is not as they're putting it out there to me. You know, let me breathe. Why am I getting caught up in this fear or this craziness in my mind if maybe this is not 100% true? And even if it's true, you learn to observe the mind. You don't get caught up in the mind because the mind is really a computer that you can program however you want. But nobody taught us that. They taught us so much stuff, but they didn't teach us that we have the power and that we have the power to step into that place of complete centeredness, of observation to say, whoa, the mind is going crazy right now. What is this? I'm not going to play these mind games and do some breath work, do some movement, like move the energy so you can step out of the mind and learn to be the observer and not get lost in all the stories of the mind. Wow. So, so basically move, move yourself and, and observe. Yes. And that the breathing techniques help you. The meditation helps you do whatever it takes. You know, if, if that means doing some jumping jacks because you don't even like yoga or whatever, just move your body. Hey, I did jumping jacks this morning. <laughs> Good. <laughs> For the first time in like, I don't know, however long, 20 years. <laughs> I, they, 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 they surprised me. Okay. Now let's do some jumping jacks. I was like, okay. Yeah. Why not? You know, <laughs> whatever works to get the energy moving and not get caught up in the mind. You need to bring the energy into the body. And what I also tell my clients always is like, 
everything that's being revealed right now is being revealed because it's it's a memory that it's in your nervous system right now we all carry memories from the past so with, with anything that's happening outside that's very intense like now or any trigger just brings out that memory that is just being revealed to you that at some point in your life you didn't heal this you didn't relieve that you didn't you didn't release it so now they're showing almost revealing you that you have the opportunity to let it go but so, that's the work you do so you what release any, it so what you're saying is any trigger anything that triggers you emotionally yes. is connected to some sort of unprocessed emotion an unprocessed exactly. memory yes so the memories from the past that we've been carrying for so long and just putting underneath the pillow in the moments we're going right now energetically physically mentally with the planet earth you can't hide those things anymore so even if people are not even worried about coronavirus or whatever people are having a lot of triggers right now like most mm -hmm. of my clients are like having a lot of stuff going on right now you know with their businesses with their relationships uh, with their health with their mind at a mental level, like mm -hmm. stuff from childhood that they even forgot that happened. You know, all of a sudden it's coming to the surface. Why? Because the energy is so intense at a collective level that you need to clear anything that is not at the vibration where the earth is vibrates, vibrating right now. Mm. As we said before, the earth came from the last 12 years from 7.83 hertz measured with a, with a machine, with Schumann frequency, now it's going up to 75 hertz some days. Like, mm -hmm. this is like, you know, five or six times. You know, it's, it, it's a lot of shift that's happening in the planet. So, of course, we as cells of this being that is planet, the planet Earth, we are receiving this vibration. And of course, anything that is not aligned to a highest vibration will come up to the surface. But that's when I talk about a blessing instead of being a curse. You're like, oh my God, thank you. Where did that come from? Right. Whoa, right. I forgot about that. You know, let me clear it from my system. And then you do some movement, you do some breath work. Right. Anything that works to get you cleared from your past, but you gotta know also what you're doing. It's not, as we were saying, that was a joke. You just, just do jumping jacks. That's not gonna heal you, right? That's gonna get you, you mean? moving. Jumping jacks are not healing? Okay, <laughs> that's it. I, you know, but, 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 you know, there, there, is, there, is, there does seem to be um, a, a, um, universal um, principles at play here. And yeah. uh, what I hear over and over again in these conversations is about surrendering and, and, and accepting the, the emotions that are coming up. Uh, yes. Accepting the trauma. Um, yes. What about if you, you know, if you, if, you, if you accept the reflection and you go, you know what, I don't like who I am. Yeah. How do you balance not liking who you are with changing who you are? That's and a accepting. really good question. And I would say, who doesn't like who you are? You gotta start analyzing which part of me doesn't like myself. Right. That would be just the ego, right? Because if we start living from the soul, the soul loves yourself and loves life. It's like a love for life. It's emanating life in every cell of your being. You're in love with life, you're in love with everyone. When you're from your soul, all from your heart, or if you call it, if that's too woo-woo for people, just being in the highest vibration you can be living from your highest self or the greatest version of you, call it however you want, where you're in that space, then it's easier to just see like, oh, interesting, this part that's coming up that I really don't love myself. Let me actually bring love to that part of me from the, the position, from my soul, instead from a, from a point right. of, of, let me fight with it, you know, from, a, from an egoistic level because it's like a dog trying to bite its own tail. You're never going to get there. It's like trying to fight ego with ego. You know, you don't have to fight ego. All you do is look at egos there and it's like tag the ego and say, oh, interesting. That's part of my negative ego. I really feel bad about myself right now, but this is not me. I choose yeah. to connect yeah. to the power of my soul. I choose to connect to the power of I am, which is my essence, which is who I really am. The rest is just a personality. It's just a personal reality that we yeah. have created ourselves. And and what, and what about this, this notion that, I mean, I, I, I hear that coming from the soul, from the, from the oneness, uh, from the Zen part, um, and approaching it and going, everything's perfect. Um, what about the idea of, of um, kind of naming and, and almost um, 
identifying it as a, as a sort of sub personality, the bits that are unhappy and like, you know, calling it like Bob. Yeah. The, the Bob part of me that. is unhappy. Yes. And, and yes. now, and, and Jonah, who's really quite happy with everything and, and likes my body and stuff. And Jonah's yeah. going to have a conversation with Bob. Do you, do you do any work with that and that notion? I love that. Yes, I call it the characters because it's the characters of the personality. You don't have to fight with them. People kind of like feel embarrassed about it, right. feel embarrassed about the thoughts that come through, feel embarrassed about the emotions. So that's the first step. I always talk in the quantum flow methodology is can you look at yourself raw and real? Can you be completely raw and real wherever you're at? You don't have to change anything right now. Just are you happy with your life? Okay, go and look at your relationship with yourself. Go and look at the relationship, intimate relationship with family. Then go and look in your business. Then go and into your health. Go every area of your life and just observe. Am I really happy if I would say, am I living in mediocrity or am I living my life 100%? Am I happy with how my life is evolving right now? It's okay not to be happy. It's okay to honor that. If not, people, that's another spiritual distortion I, I feel that happens. It's like, oh, everything's perfect. It's all good. Right. Oh, right. don't worry. And they just bypassing. So they're not really doing the work. Like to do the work, you've got to see it. You've got to honor it. You've got to love it. But then come on, bring those mm -hmm. memories out of your system. Because if they're coming up, it's because they're there. And that's when you start programming or reprogramming your unconscious mind. You start reprogramming your nervous system in order to align every cell of your being with your soul, with your highest mm -hmm. vibration, with the highest thoughts you can have, with the yeah. highest emotions. And then your, your life just starts getting refined. And one, one of our viewers is asking about um, autism. And, um, you know, uh, they have a, a son who's, uh, who's autistic and struggling with the, the uh, collective uh, trauma that's occurring in the world. And, and they're wondering if, there's, uh, if you have any advice on um, a kind of nonverbal uh, support that can help him get back into his body and back into this principle of acceptance. And Yes. Uh, for them, it's very important just helping them, looking at them in the eyes, like letting them know you're here, like touching them, loving them, grounding, like the right, touch grounding. is very important, the love, and just it's energy transmission. That's why I talk all about in the quantum flow. It's like we're energy beings. We're not just a body. The body is just a vehicle for now, but we're energetic beings. We're a soul living a human experience. So for them, with this vibration, is this if this is a mother, the father, mm -hmm. or, or, or a friend, what, whoever the, the, the person that's asking, just giving them the love and the presence right. with the energy of like, hey, it's all good. It's all the okay. Be with yeah. me. It's Be almost, in your body. Almost like being a surrogate for, yes. for their stability. Yes. A surrogate for the stability. Yes. That's what they need. They need grounding. They need earth. They need like, Hey, it's feel safe. Let their nervous system feel that we're safe. And that's something, Mark, I see we all need. Even mm. like the super spiritual people like you, I'm sure you have, we've had a lot of talks about this, but all these different awakenings we've had in our life and stuff like they wouldn't have happened if we wouldn't have felt safe in our nervous system right. to open up and lose control and let the universe take us whatever is taking us. Like it takes a lot of courage, right? Because yeah. A lot of triggers come up to like, oh my God, that's unknown for me. And when you feel unknown and you don't know where you're going and you're so used to have control in your life, mm -hmm. you kind of put a break and you right. don't let the transformation happen, right? Yeah. Or of course, just being completely worn out from resisting that you, exactly. <laughs> you've got nothing left. <laughs> Finally, the universe can come in after you've exhausted your defense mechanisms. Which exactly. is basically where any of my realizations have come from. I know. Being well, exhausting. we're hard-headed. Sometimes we need that. And it's okay, too. Yeah. You know, it's all good. And um, what about, you know, earthing and getting into the ground and, and getting touched back in with nature and stuff? Yeah. Well, that's part of, like, you, you know I have the shamanic lineage. Like, I work with shamans for 25 years. It's been my thing, like, working in, in so many ways, connecting with the elements. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they teach you is, like, earth elements yes the fire is amazing yes the water the are all of it but let's get you grounded your earth is your purpose your earth is your safety your earth is feeling that 
that empowerment of just being who you are, of being in your body, of being in the bliss of being alive and awake, just being present. If we can only start by that. So what I, what I always tell people is like, I mean, if you can go to nature and ground, even if you have just a tree or a plant or anything that connects directly to the earth, go and touch that. And not only with the intention, the intention is important, but know that there's a whole scientific research behind, behind this. They do healing through grounding. They call it earthing. People can Google this. There's so many healing therapies. They do just burying people on the earth or just putting your feet on the earth, barefoot, you know, no plastic, yeah. nothing. This just sends you the frequency of the earth that we were talking about and goes right into your brain. Like in one minute, you are purified. The earth takes all the EMF frequencies from the cell phones, from the Wi-Fi, from the Bluetooth, from all the electronics that affects our en en energy fields and just purifies us. And then not only that, but helps us awaken our right side of the brain, that it's our intuition, it's our feminine, it's our love, it's our compassion, it's our being, the bliss of being alive again, right? People are mm. too much in the rationality, which is their left side of the brain, which is the masculinity, but it's the, 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 um, uh, the distorted part of the masculine. It's not the, the empowered part of the masculine. So people are so used to just living in the rational side and they forget that we are intuitive beings, that we're here to flow, that we're here to listen. And then the mind just is in the mercy of the heart. And that's the balance between masculine and feminine. That's what the earth gives us. She mm. gives us that feminine energy for us to like almost connect with the womb of the mother, you know, that's which right. is like, ah, oh, that safety. What? Well, how, how would you... Uh... Uh, say because you know there's this notion of of intuition and then there's also of course um emotional fear that that drives people um how how are people to really identify the difference between what's intuition what's from the higher self and what's fear from the external world that's such a good question man i call it the soul gym the soul say gym. it again i call it the soul gym soul gym yeah yeah, because you can't, you know, you can't go and, and lift 200 pounds from one day to the other. You've never lifted weights. You're going to injure yourself. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's like, same thing here. Like, it takes time to connect with the intuition. But the more you do it, and I will talk about it now, but it's for people, the first thing to know is like, okay, I'm choosing to start listening to my intuition. I'm choosing to start living my life from my intuition. That's the first thing. Choice, yeah. So before making a decision... I always tell them like, look, there's a difference between deciding something from your mind. People write down the pros, the cons. Oh, now let me decide how many pros, how many cons. The soul doesn't work like that, you know? The soul is more like the intuition sometimes is one yes and a hundred no's, but the right thing to do from your gut was the one yes. You know, it's not a mind thing, but in order to get there, one exercise I love sharing with people is like, hey guys, the first three seconds of any decision you're gonna make, that's your soul. The first three seconds, your mind can't get in there in the first three seconds. So, hey, do you wanna go tonight to my house? Do you wanna come and have, and even if it's your best friend, there's something in your gut that says, oh no, but then you're like, how am I not going to go? They're inviting me to dinner. Like my friend is going to be there and amazing music and blah, blah, blah. Something told you, this is not right. Stay home. You're going to have a blast just being with yourself. Get a wine if you need to get a wine. Whatever you need, be home. Be with yourself. Listen to that, you know? Sometimes we don't listen. How many times we've been going or doing something because influences from outside and then we're like, I felt it. I felt it from the beginning. Why did I do it? Right. That's the right. gut feeling. But instead of being hard with yourself, instead of judging yourself, instead of criticizing, you're like, mm, interesting. I felt that. Okay, next time I'll be more available. I'll be more open. I'll listen more. And that's when you start getting the soul gym until next time when they ask you something or you feel something or you feel inspired by something. You're like, hmm, where is this coming from? Let me feel it. Is it a mind thing, a fixation, an obsession in my mind? Or is it something that just resonates in my gut? 
And then your life just becomes flow because you start, you learn to live from your intuition. And that means you're aligned with the universe. You're in synchronicity. Your life just flows. That's why I call it quantum flow because yeah, you're yeah. really living in flow. So would you, would you really say that it's location in the body where the decision feels like, like, you know, does it work like that? That the location, I mean, what if my big toe wanted to stay at home, but my left ear wants to go? I mean, it's like, is That's it, so funny. Is it, literally it like could that? be, you know, you know what I've seen? That's not my experience with intuition or with my clients. I'm never close to anything, you know, because you never know. I can't say there's nothing, there's never like a, a hundred percent truth, right? There's always right. whatever. But what I've seen with working with thousands of clients is like when there's something that's not flowing or is not in the highest, they can learn to feel it in their body. Some, some people feel it in the, in the neck, some the head or a toe or something. It's like the way the body speaks to them, like, bam, 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 listen. So when I have that, for me, it's in the gut. It's in, right in the solar plexus. I feel the fire here. And I'm like, oh, 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 okay. I don't make any decision. I just take myself to breathe. Again, come back to the observer. Right, right. Observe it, yeah. Breathe and, and ask. Ask myself. Ask my higher self. Okay, Juanpa, is there anything available that I'm not listening to? I'm open. I'm receptive. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you, thank you. Yes, I'm right. here. And then that you start creating that relationship. It's that curiousness, right? Yes wonder curiousness is coming back to be a child man we forgot right. right the inner child that's in wonder you know life is beautiful yes guide me universe or right. soul however you want to call this infinite intelligence why am i thinking i have all the answers please guide me infinite right. intelligence right. i am open i'm receptive wow and there's there's a i and, and you know because a lot of society seems to train us out of uh, allowing yes. the child to speak um, yes. and, and some of the, even though we have knowledge as adults, um, and as people of experience, we have great knowledge, uh, and experience, which, which feeds us, the, the child has something that we lose with age, which is the curiosity, uh, that, that wonderment. Yes. And I suppose it's, it's, again, it's not deleting one and saying, Oh, you old man that's been around a hundred years, ignore everything, you know, because there'll be great stuff yes. there, right? Uh, and so that, that, yes. that dance between um, the surrender and, and, and the, the wisdom or the experience. Exactly. Um, and that's, as you're saying, they teach us in humanity, when we, when we start growing up, they teach us. And that's what I always say. It's like, there's nothing to teach we're just remembering as soul beings, there's nothing to teach. All we do is guide the soul, the, the child, to like, oh, you have that passion, you have that call. Oh, that's how it flows through you. Oh, let me nurture that. Oh, that's too much, you know. Let's, let's, let's find a way to, to help that tree that we are. You know, if you're an avocado tree, be the best avocado tree you can be. You know, right, I'll help right. you. I'll, I'll nurture your avocado tree, but I can't ask you to be a banana tree, man. Like that's, that's what people disconnect from themselves because yeah. the parents want them to be something they're not instead of nurturing all the gifts from their soul that have always been there. There's nothing to, to give more than is actually listening mm. to the soul mm. and helping the child find what is their deepest truth. That's all we do. So when you keep the child, like with my, with my son, my son is 40, 15 years old, just made 15 years old. Man, he's written his own book. He's found his own purpose. Like he's, he's rocking it online, doing stuff mm -hmm. for teenagers. He's so clear on his purpose. But it's not because I vaccinated him with, with my own purpose. You know, I just listen to him and I'm like, oh, you really like that? All right. You like music? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Drum kit. Get your drum kit. You, you know, I just nurture his highest self and he's fully tapped into it. Beautiful. So that's beautiful uh, uh, processing as a parenting. How do we apply that to our own parenting, like of ourselves? Because, yeah. you know, people are going to be coming up, uh, up against their edges now. And like, as, as I said from the beginning, the um, habit patterns are, are, are deleting, are, are, are removing. How do we yes. parent ourselves uh, into, our, into what maybe wasn't nurtured earlier? 
Yes, that's such a good question, Mark, because I see people going, I talk about this all the time, and I see people going a little crazy, like, what do you mean I'm, I'm my own parent? Oh, wait, 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 now you drove me crazy. What do you mean with that, right? And yeah. this is how I could heal that relationship with myself and the non-love for myself, not feeling good enough, having all these patterns of procrastination, of self-sabotage, of distraction. I had such a destructive personality, but because I was so hard on myself, you know? Like my parents did the best they could, but their attitude with me was always like, there's more, you can do more, right. you can be better, right. you're amazing, you're winning all this, you're doing right. all that, but why did you get an A minus? You could have got an A plus. Man, it was always like this. Yeah. I felt I was never good enough. Yeah. So what do we do? Even if I go to live to China, it doesn't matter. That behavior that I, that I had with my parents, I take it on myself. Right. So I become my worst parent. In the right, way. right, right. I had this myself. You know, just, exactly. <laughs> just last week, I had this realization that I was doing to my partner what my mom did to me. Like, yes. you know, it, I believe in you. You can do it. Come on. You can be better than this. And I'm like, because <laughs> somewhere we believe that's encouraging, right? Yes. We're on their side. We're like, you're great. I believe yes. in you, but somewhere we're also saying it's currently not good enough. Exactly. That's the message underneath. Cause remember we're playing through the unconscious mind, right? Mm -hmm. And in the mm -hmm. unconscious mind, 95% of your actions come from your unconscious mind. People right. think it's their rationality and they're like, oh, I am abundance, I am love. They, all, they go into all these affirmations and all this law of attraction and all that. But if you're not dealing with the unconscious mind, which comes from our childhood, you yes. will be looping, having the same results, repeating the same patterns as you're saying yeah. with your children, with your partner, with yourself, because we haven't healed that relationship with our parents or with our inner child however you want to call it so we can become the best parent imagine being the most supporting most amazing parent you can be for yourself that doesn't mean like nothing matters no no give the best you got but always like hey Juanpa, that was amazing man that was good it's okay you were tired you were in your best but right. you did amazing you know like that's how, that's how I talk to myself all the time. And I build this loving relationship with myself. And whenever I'm judging myself, I'm like, wait, 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 why am I judging? Let me breathe love into every cell of my being. Where mm. is that pattern coming from, you know? And Beautiful. then all starts being healed. Yeah, lovely. And um, by the way, we are now at uh, 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 22 the hour. If anyone wants to uh, call in to the show, you are welcome to the uh, the the number for the Zoom is in the in all the descriptions uh, three nine one eight six zero five five three password Unity. You can call in. You'll get to the waiting room if you've got questions for one. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're, also we're, in my Facebook Live, I'm sharing here. If people have are questions open. or people want to comment, let me know where you're tuning in from. All the people are writing in my Facebook Live too. So guys, I listen to you too. If you have any questions, we're here to 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 uh to flow in whatever way it's going i love this double double stream thing going yeah. on yeah <laughs> <clears throat> um it, you know so this this looping of the subconscious how how can what are the markers that we can look out for that give us an indication that we might be looping uh, uh, uh something in the background that our foreground consciousness isn't aware of yes i always focus in on like hey look around you what are your results How's your relationship? Why are you repeating the same patterns with your partner? Like why? Right. Right. I mean, you can, you can tell me you're reading all the books you want. You've done all the trainings you want, but is it really working? Mm -hmm. You know, like, is that really going to the memory and releasing the memory? Cause there's a lot of stuff out there that's very flaky and fluffy, you know, and they kind of tell you the story that it works, that it's good for you, that you can do it. But at the end, if you see around, you're like, okay, I wanted to focus on, on, on abundance because I know I can, deserve you know abundance and live in a better way and share my abundance with the world and stuff like that but why is it not showing up right why is it why is my health still not the best and i'm training and doing all this diet and all this stuff but why is it not changing you have to go to the mindset you got you have to go to the core the structure that's underneath because if you don't you're playing with the tip of the iceberg and mm. not with the core that's really where you want to go 
So mm-hmm. that's, that's, I always see it in results, right? And in triggers. Am I still having the same triggers? Why do I have the same triggers as five years ago? That means maybe my alchemy work, my inner work is not as profound. Like I can approach it in a different way. Okay. All right, right, so let's, let's say you've noticed a, a, a pattern that you thought with your conscious mind that you were <clears throat> uh, evolved beyond, and now you're seeing that your subconscious is creating a, a repeat pattern. Let's say the non-prosperity uh, pattern. Yes. How, how do you begin to honor uh, what is the true you? And I, I, I mean, I'm assuming that the, the inner child's uh, desires and that, that true you is going to lead to a more balanced uh, output for you. So how do you start to, okay, I know my prosperity stuff is an issue. What do I do? First of all, be raw and real. Okay, because I have a lot of, you know, spiritual people or people in the spiritual path come to me like, Oh my, they're super tapped in. Their chakras here are like, man, they see angels, they see unicorns, all the story, right? And they're yeah, like, oh yeah. my God. But then like their first chakra is completely disconnected. First, second, and third are like in denial. And that's mm. what happens. People go or too much to the masculine, too much yeah. to the feminine, too much to matter or too much to spirituality. How can we fuse both? And that's why I love, that's why with the quantum flow, this is how we work. We go deep and like we acknowledge every chakra, we acknowledge every layer of your being. So the first thing we do in grounding is the first stage. It's like, where are you right now? Let's get raw and real. Okay, my life is not prosperous. It's good. I know I'm not just a material being. That's good. But how am I going to pay my bills? I know it's, I don't have to fight my, my, my uh, material reality you know because many people in the spiritual path are against the material but then they're like i can't even pay you know a a fruit that i want to eat that's organic it's too it's too much it's too expensive to be organic you know so it's it's a controversy it's a paradox so be one real then the next step that we tell them is do your alchemy do a work of transformation that works for me i love the method that we use because we use breath work we use uh, hypnopet therapy, we use NLP, we use um, energy work, we use um, uh, different movements and activations using the muscles and using the dormant parts of the brain. Like right, right. we approach it in every way possible so the person can rewire their whole system in every way possible and not just with mindset, not just with fitness, not just with eating better food. I think we're holistic beings. So right. I tell people always, Look for a system that's holistic that can help you in every way so you can transform it. Right. So it's like if you really want a shift to happen, uh, shift as many different aspects of your life, your spiritual practice, your exercise practice, your nutrition, all at the same time to kind of do a sort of multi butterfly effect. Um, respecting yourself because people can go crazy. I want to deal with all of it now. And then it's right. overwhelming. Take it one step at a time. That's it's, why what I've fused in this method is we work on all of it together. It's a manifestation right. method. So all we're doing is like, you want to focus on your business? Let's use the same method to focus on your business. You want right. to focus on your health? Now the class today, the activation today is on your health. So you see, it's the same method, the same seven steps that work on the right. seven right. chakras biohacking the nervous system, but you're focusing on different areas of your life because if you just focus on one, on all of them, you're doing all and nothing at the same time. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is an interesting interesting tactic that you're doing there. You're you're both focusing on one, like the technique, and and you kind of like champion one side of the life per day. Kind of like you spend a whole day on one aspect, like, right, let's get your fitness plan down. Let's see what you like to do. Let's try it out. Yes. Now get it down. Okay, now tomorrow we're going to look at your meditation plan. We're going to look at how it works, what works for you, what breath work works for you. Good. I like that because then that's like. Or it can be per week. You know, it can be per week that you go into and then and then you're like, oh, I just nailed my 15 minute fitness practice. That's good for me and it's it's spiritual too. For example, I created this method called Quantum Flow Fitness, which is super spiritual. But you get fit, you get strong, you lose fat, you burn Mm -hmm. calories, you rewire your whole system. So you can find ways where you fuse different things, but your intention needs to be one because wherever you focus your attention, your intention. That's where your energy is going to go. So you want to give it all you've got 
in order to create the shift from within to right. expand and see the results, the changes in your life as fast as possible. Because that motivates you to go deeper. If you don't see results, then you're like, oh, whatever. I'll just eat whatever. Oh, that fitness yeah. thing doesn't work. Oh, I'll never get the partner of my dreams. I'll never make money. I'm just a spiritual right, right, being. I'm right. not here to make money. All these stories that people keep repeating. Yeah, amazing. Right, we've got a, we've got a call in. Adam Hansen. Let's see what Adam Hansen's got to say. So right. uh, one of our first call-ins, Adam Hansen. Expand and see the results oh, hang on. changes in your life. Yeah, yeah, you have to do that. You have to mute the other. Uh, you got a video? Yeah, yeah. All right. Adam, welcome. Morning, hey, welcome. brother. Hey, one part. How are we? <laughs> good, man. Good to see what, you, bro. What have yeah, you, you got to say, Adam? Oh, what, oh well, um... I've been on this journey. I've been doing the quantum flow journey for about, oh, we're into week four now with Wampar. And um, it's been quite amazing. I've been in the uh, field of, um, you know, martial arts and healing, Reiki master and that for the last 25, 30 years. And exactly what he's saying, I'm looping. I've been in that in that loop, man, for, for that long. And honestly, the last three or four weeks, I've had some of the biggest transformational changes I've ever had in my life, just getting right into, especially the alchemy of um, the quantum flow. So yeah, man, just, it's been, been an amazing uh, start to 2020 for me. It's been, yeah, full on. Nice. So yes, you're, just, you're, you're just, you're just promoting the quantum flow. More or less. Yeah. Well, wonderful, like, yeah. Wonderful. I, I, well, that's, that's very good. That's very good. Do you but, have yeah, any no, question? Man, do you have any question? Because you always have amazing questions in the course. If you wanna, I think that's you, it's really good from you being an expert in martial arts and qigong and energy and spirituality. If you wanna bring something for the people, anything that comes through mind, anything you're going through, because you've been so raw and real, man. That's what's giving you also the results. You've been so true with yourself and so humble, because people can get lost in like, oh, now I'm a spiritually somewhere that whatever, and that takes them away from the real work that they can do because we're always upgrading so anything you want to share with that would be amazing since you're in camera man yeah well, i think you know I th from, from here on is actually getting people to identify you know the hardest thing i find is people um actually taking the challenge to look into themselves and really get raw and real with themselves that's my biggest challenge i've got quite a few students some really uh, you know are open and uh, you know receptive to it and others say they just keep looking for that outside source, someone else to give them the answers. They're always looking for, right. you know, asking the questions, how do I fix this? And it's like, man, here's the tools, but you've got to take the process, man. So yeah. with, with regards to that, do you think one that, um, you know, uh, using a kind of a discomfort um, scale, like a, a compass that is like, where am I most uncomfortable? Do you think it's always a good idea to go where you're most uncomfortable in this process? You got to balance, right? You got to balance because there's, I was fixated before, like, let me just go to all my uncomfortability and bring everything out. But then it becomes work all the time. Like you got to have fun and do the work, the inner alchemy, right? That's the balance. So I feel both are important. You go deep, right? And you're like, oh my God, let me, I feel uncomfortable right now with this person. Let me speak my truth. Let me see mm. why is this uncomfortable? Why am I triggered? Let me stay in the fire a little bit and go deep because right. that's good. But then it's like, okay, now let me breathe. You know, let me do something that feels good. Let me go and digest this because if not, I'm just, my energy is just going to go too much inside in contraction. So you have to find that what we call spanda in Tantra, that expansion and that contraction where you're pulsating in universal pulsation. So it's just finding what is your balance. Maybe for me, is going so much deeper and going hard. And that's not, you know, that's not hard on my system. For some people can be just like one minute, it's enough. But it's important to mm. challenge yourself into your uncomfortable zones for sure. If you want to go, if you want to grow, the only way is like look at those uncomfortable zones and bring light and love into them. Nice, nice. Thanks, Thanks for calling in, Adam. No, thank you. Thanks for having me. You. Thanks, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you um, for yeah. sharing, man. <laughs> So it's, it, you know, it reminds me of this, uh, you know, this balance between pleasure and pain. It, it kind of, for some reason, and I like to share things as they come up, but it's like, you know, um, in, in S&M, when you smack a bottom or when you're being smacked, there's like, you smack yeah. and then you rub softly 
and then you smack, yeah. and then you rub so this <laughs> pleasure and pain uh, 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 balance that's going to come off. Um, uh, uh, Jeffrey Armstrong is saying uh, the password's not working. Ooh. Um, oh. Let's see. Uh, Jeffrey's going to come on uh, after you, and so I'm just making sure it... Oh, uh, he's amazing. I love Jeffrey, man. He's such a master in astrology, huh? Yeah, exactly. In many exactly. things. In many things, yeah. but I can't wait to see him too. Um, let's see. Uh, password. Um, it's, uh, it's Zoom. <laughs> just checking, because they, they, were, they were a little bit uh, confused that it was um, Facebook, uh, you know, the... the but um, the password should work. Unity, unity. Yeah, I mean, um, um, Adam just got on with that password. So, um, yeah. So, so what, tell us about the other stuff you, you're doing. Like, you know, we're in the last few minutes. It's been great having you on. Um, um, right. Uh, let me send an invite then. Um, sorry, I've just processed this. Uh, tell us about, you know, what you see as... as as clients and, and different things like that, um, you know, what, what oh, I'm doing, what, Mark, I'm offering a lot on free online. If people follow me and go to my fan page and like what they see, I'm, I'm just, I just want to give, you know, I just feel, I feel so empowered right now and going through challenges myself, but I shift them and then I share with the world. That's constantly, I see like serving helps me so much to shift my own, you know? So I do my inner work, you know, I do my quantum flow, but then I go and share it with the work like all the time. So they can just come and just follow and just, just get all the goodies, a lot of free stuff just there for people. And also if they want to go deep, for example, if the, now I have like almost a hundred people in the quantum flow training, learning all this art that they're going to go and share with millions of people around the world. So for me, it depends on how deep you want to go and, and, and how committed you are. Some people just have enough with the free stuff and just watching a little bit here and playing a little bit there and just kind of playing around a little bit because they're kind of, they don't know, you know, or they're scared or they have doubt. But the more they start seeing the results, then the more I invite them to just commit to go deeper, go into whatever you can. So I have all kinds of courses. They can also go and look in my webpage, juanpablobaraona.com. They can, they can see there, like I work a lot on, like working with relationships, with health, with detox. We work with leadership. I work a lot with leaders. I, I work with a lot of, you know, YPOs and CEOs from all over the world. I help them go deep and have uh, heart entrepreneurship, you know, like connect with their heart and lead from their heart because I right. feel many of them lead from the mind. So we work in many levels and people are welcome to work in any level they want and, and we'll be committed to go deep together. And are you, what sort of, uh, are, you, are you doing live? Are you going live often these days? A lot. I love going live. I'm, I'm doing work, workouts and people just jump in and do it. We do ceremonies. I work a lot with my partner, Regan Hillier. We, we have a really nice just flow uh, uh, helping people. We, we take people so deep together, you know, masculine, feminine. So a lot of stuff being offered just to help humanity right now. I feel it's such a moment for us to live hell on earth or live heaven on earth. And it's, it's a choice, but can we give people all the tools that they can use for them to create heaven on earth? Right, I love that. Um, your keyboard. Sorry, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get uh, uh, Jeffrey in and um, he's having tech tech problems maybe i have to call him up um and and people can see you individually you do one-to-one -one clients with them as well i do personal clients too but that's that's like a biggest investment and i take it for one year i don't i don't do just one one nice. one hour consultation i i love commitment man i'm all about commitment the more commi people commit with me the deeper we go you know so for me a training just a training it's a huge commit they almost have me one-on-one -on -one. like i'm on the group super present I, I love it. I just love it, man. It's not, I don't yeah. see it as work. It's just love. But if they want to work one-on-one, -on -one, it's a full one-year commitment. It's, it's, it's a, you know, it's a bigger investment. It's different, but there's many options. Yeah. And um, I, I love that. Do, can, can people like have a chat with you before they think about a, a year? Like, I mean, how do you run that? If, if people. Oh yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. I recommend to come and do courses first to see if they like my energy yeah. My philosophy, I, we have to fall in love with each other. If not, 
I don't want to work with people that just are there because, oh, they heard I gave big results because nobody, you know, uh, uh, received the results like they did with Wampa and then they come because of that, but they just want to focus on money or they just want to focus on something that's not from the soul level. Man, I don't care if they're going to pay how much money, like it needs to be a soul connection, you know? So for me, that we get to know each other, we get to work, they get to do my online stuff, we get to go, you know, it's like a relationship. I feel with clients, you just go intimate deeper and deeper. So it, it's a very beautiful relationship you cultivate, you know, with time, there's no rush. And we just feel it in your gut. You just know if you want to work with someone or not, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And I love that authenticity. I mean, it's, it's, it's really how we have to approach, um, it's really how we have to approach life and um yeah. and, and our own and our own um our our own healing is is what you're suggesting with that authenticity of of the relationship has to be the same as the individual as you know each point it's like each point down the spiral has to seem has to be similar has to yes. um, be that same yes, mark Mark, I see so many healers or yoga teachers or psychotherapists or whatever, but even spiritual healers or Reiki masters or whatever, like go into this loop of scarcity, almost like they have to have their clients, uh, uh, you know, keep coming to sessions or keep coming this because they need to. And man, sometimes people come, you know, to a training, to a something, they get healed in, in one session. They get healed in, in one class. They were like, we don't need to, brainwash them for them to keep coming from a scarcity point of view with all the excuses that they need to da, da, da. there's no need like people need to feel it themselves we're nobody to say mm. what people need if they ask and they're if they know there's so much more than we're there to offer but i see so many people manipulating and almost brainwashing others in order to they use their power in right. that way and it's something, it's so karmic, man. When I started my path 25 years ago, I used to be like that. It was a typical healer thing to like, oh, you need to come in two days because, oh, your liver is in pieces. Like, I need to work on you right now. And I would always find something. And then I'm like, oh my God, I saw so much karma coming my way. So be careful, healers. Be careful because it's all going to come your way at some point. <laughs> you know, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come um, and, and it's... it's it's about authenticity. It's about exactly. Again, it's practice what you preach. We're, we're, we're back onto the scriptures, aren't we? Walk your talk, man. Right. It's like, how can we be attracting whatever we want to attract? If we're not walking our talk, if we're not doing our practice, right. It's, it's a lack of integrity. So for me, that's, that's so important to that's step number one in my life. You know, I'm always checking in. Am I in my eyes? Am I in integrity? I'm a human. I'm not saying I'm perfect. But I'm always looking at myself to like, huh, one part, no, no, no. Come on, let's bring it up, you know. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. I, I mean, I love, I love the work you're doing. And, you know, from when I first saw you, that, that presence that you, that you are um, inspires, inspires people uh, to, mm. to their own presence, to their mm. own being. And I think that's what, that's what, you know, the reason I'm doing these these moments is is to help bring uh inspiration to people so they recognize they are the power they are the they are the light yes they are the, light. They are the light. power we've been looking for is inside of us the answer we've been looking for it's inside of us it's actually been looking for us but we don't come to that place of being where we can receive the answers right so that's amazing mark amazing um Jeffrey's not been able to get on. Um, oh, no. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep talking. He's, he's saying the password's <laughs> wrong. Uh, you know, I, Is he doing it in capital letters? Ask him if he's doing it in capital yeah, letters. It because, should be in capitals, right? Yeah, it's all capitals. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure he's getting frustrated, but he can use his, his, his Vedic uh, piece, philosophical piece of presence. To, uh, yeah, man, since we're here, I want to invite people because I have in my own Facebook um, page, I have all these people writing all the amazing results they've had with Quantum Flow because I did this five-day immersion on my yeah. fine page for free. If mm -hmm. people are seeing me for the first time, you're invited, just go to my fine page and look for it. It's a full-on five-day like 
one hour, one hour and 15 minutes, one hour and a half each day that I shared a lot of technology, a lot of methodology that can help people so much. So if you've never heard of this, I invite you. It's for free. Just come join. Just let me know that you joined and give me a like or just share where you're tuning in from. And I always love, you know, inviting people to the community and feeling that together we create a bigger vortex, a bigger change in the world comes by working out together. And even if it's a replay or it's a recording, I come with, I feel like this, if people are even watching the recording after we did it tomorrow or whenever that is, I'll be sharing this again in three or four days. You know, I love doing that. Perfect. Even if people are just watching the replay right now, they're getting the energy, they're feeling us, they can be with us because time yeah. and space doesn't exist. It's just an illusion. Right. So when you know that, you're like, yeah, I'm here, yes. <laughs> this time period is like no other we've had where the entire world has an opportunity to um, sit within the discomfort and the fire of surrendering the habit patterns that are normally being established that um, safeguarded our idea of who we were. They were, they were um, markers and pillars that bounced us into certain corridors like a pinball machine, uh, directing our ball bearing up into different patterns and around. And now suddenly those um, barriers have gone and our pinball goes all over the place. And a lot of people feel that this is understandably a panicky like, oh, who am I? And there's, a, there's a, an internal looking because now there's, there's less of an external distraction. So during this internal looking, the best thing we can do, regardless of where this thing has come from or what the reasons are behind it or who might be taking advantage, regardless of all of that, the best things that we can do for ourselves is to use this as a, as a gift, as an absolute gift to appreciate that we now can look at ourselves, we can uh, assess our truths. Who are we inside without all of those um, external barriers to funnel us into an identity? Who are we really now? There are some keys to, to enable that, that inquiry uh, to be most effective. And the first is to, to decide that you're going to be curious, to be open to whatever the answers are. Sitting, and again, you don't have to actually sit, but being in the place where you say, I am listening humbly to the universe, or if you want, to nature, or if you want, to the silence and inside the silence there is a, a a deafening you know that saying the silence can be deafening it comes from meditation practice where inside the silence and behind the silence and before the silence and within the silence there is a a, a sound a harmonic of the universe and if you have meditated with light and sound you access this you hear this now, back to the ego and the personality, sitting in the curious observation of the sound of silence enables you to tune into the harmony. That means your rhythm, your frequency, your pulsing, your sound harmonizes with the sound of silence, which it fundamentally always does. But you become aware of that. You become, oh, and I can see here I've been doing this. Uh, uh, and I've been not listening to the silence. And so I've been creating a clattering, a dissonance where one wave hits the other. Instead, there, is, there can be a harmonic resonance with you and with your environment. So sit humbly, listen, play music, sing, be a devotional, devote yourself. What to, I'm not talking religiously. I'm talking about the universe, uh, nature. Uh, um, uh, the environment. Devote yourself to the planet. I mean, like not in some sort of, you know, activist way, but I mean, be in humble appreciation of the earth and what the earth has provided in terms of this completely accepting biosphere of co cocoon that accepts every human. doesn't matter what you're doing, how good or bad you are, the biosphere of the planet accepts you and loves you and holds you. So be in an appreciation of that, sitting in silent 
appreciation or sitting in appreciation of the silence and the harmonics of the silence gives you an ability to start to honor your inner self. And part that's made your inner self up are all your inner children, all the youth, all the pre yous even the you from yesterday is there inside you watching. And the you from last week is there, and the you from last year, and the you, the you from 10 years ago. All the yous are there. And of course, the younger yous have these um, learnt responses that, that we didn't know uh, what was really going on at the time. And we interpret things maybe with, with innocent eyes where we blame ourselves. Like, I'm sure somewhere in my psyche, I blame myself for my parents' divorce. You know, I was only four, but it must have been my fault. Otherwise, why? You know, we know that those patterns happen. So honoring the children and giving them voice and a great technique to give your children voice is to, is to embody an archetypal um, identity where separate out the identities of people. And, you know, if you want to use deities like Shivas and gods and Lakshmis and different things, um, or if you want to use um, just, you know, masculine, feminine labels or just names of people, you can um, create a, an identity that helps separate these other parts of you from the blur that's you so that you can have a conversation. Oh, um, you know, angry owl inside Mark um, What is it you feel? I feel very weird. Okay, okay, right? And then it gives you a dialogue and, and an ability to help parts of you be heard without the overall part of you ridiculing and saying, that's stupid, that's silly, I am me and I'm only me, and this is all I am. Be open, be present, be the observer, and, and play. Play the theater of life with your own inner uh, 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 performance. <laughs> have have the, the, the characters. Oh God, one thing that Rupert uh, Spira said when he was in a conversation with Rupert Sheldrake, it was brilliant. This notion that we are actors that have forgotten we're acting. You know, we're playing the role of, of our character and we're playing it so deeply that we've literally forgotten that we're playing the role of the character. And in that, the character will never understand that they're not the character. So all we can do is sit with a humble appreciation of the potential of the unknown. We do not know and sit in the, be comfortably uncomfortable with that and breathe. It's all connected to the breath. If you find yourself holding your breath, you know that something's going on. A like and share and have watch parties. If you hit the share button underneath, there's an option to host a watch party. And you can do that multiple times, about five or six times to different groups and stuff. I have a book, Book Evolve. It's very funny and it's got cartoons. It's got cartoons in it. And at the same time as being funny, it's fully referenced. Like it's a, it's a textbook that's also an experience book. So check it out. You can find me and the work I do on markabardi.com. Uh, I am a, a wizard of many descriptions. It's all about your empowerment. So see you tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat place. Uh, this is Mark Abadi. Um, much love to the community. And uh, stay safe, stay well, stay brave. And it's in that courage. Remember, courage comes from the French courage, which is a heart and uh, old French uh, courage. And with heart, be. Be with heart, be courageous and be curious. Be innocently curious. Look with the eyes of a child and the wisdom of our elders, of our ancestors. The eyes of a child and the wisdom of the ancestors gaze upon the world with that. Thank you so much. It has been a pleasure as always. It's an honor to uh, bring to you the luminaries of, of uh, the world and, and to help ho host these discussions. Thank you very much. Enjoy nature. Enjoy your curiosity. Be courageous. Go to where it's uncomfortable, but also go to where it's comfortable. Balance. Thank you.